All right, today I want to walk you through all the forces which are acting on an object like this block when it's placed on a hill. And more importantly, I want to get at why an object like this block has a tendency to slide downhill. You see, this is a situation you're probably familiar with. Any kid who's ever tried to ride a bicycle downhill understands the object, the bicycle, has a tendency to go downhill. But the confusion comes when we try to formalize this and turn this into what most people encounter as introductory physics. You see, there's actually only two forces acting on this block right here, and neither of them are pointed downhill. The first is gravity, which we know is straight down. And gravity, or what we'd call the weight of the object, can be calculated just knowing the mass of the block times the acceleration due to gravity. And the other force is the normal force. You see, in physics and math, the word normal means perpendicular to a surface or an object. And so the normal force between this block and the hill is perpendicular to the hill. And those are the only two forces acting on the block. So why does this block have a tendency to slide downhill? And the answer to that question lies in looking at the components of these forces. See, you may have taken a vector before and broken it up into its vertical and horizontal components. And we're going to do the exact same thing here with our little block sitting on this hill. But rather than breaking these forces up into their components in the x and y axes, what I want to do is I want to look at the components of forces that are parallel to the hill and perpendicular to the hill. You see, by definition, this normal force is perpendicular to the hill. But gravity has a component which is down the hill or parallel to the hill, as well as a component which is perpendicular to the hill. And it's in understanding how all these components relate that we can quantify this normal force and understand why this block is going to slide downhill. You see, looking at this block right here, we know the block isn't going to take off this way and fly up off of the hill. And ultimately what that means is that this normal force is balanced out by this component of gravity which is acting down and to the left. Or mathematically you could say this component is equal to Fn. And realize, ultimately what you're looking at right here is just a right triangle. Now if we want to solve for the magnitude of Fn, what we need to do is somehow relate the geometry of this triangle to the hill itself. You see, if the hill is tilted at some angle, I'm going to call that theta, above the horizontal axis, that means this angle right in here between the weight downward and this component perpendicular to the hill is also theta. I mean, imagine we were to take the angle of this hill and to decrease it so that this theta right here got closer and closer to zero. Ultimately, what that would mean is this angle right in here would also get closer and closer to zero. These are equal angles. So looking at this as a right triangle, we have an angle and a hypotenuse, and this component right here is the adjacent side. Or really, we could say that this component right here, which we know is equal to the normal force, is equal to mg, the hypotenuse, multiplied by the cosine of this angle. Ultimately, what that means is for this block on the hill, the normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. And we have a similar situation with this force down the hill, looking at this as the hypotenuse, and then this force down the hill as being the opposite side of this triangle. Realize this angle and this angle are both equal to the angle of the hill. That means this force down the hill is in fact mg sine theta because it's the opposite side of this right triangle where the hypotenuse is mg. So what we wind up with here is this block has an unbalanced force down the hill, which we're calling fd. But realize that force down the hill is just the component of gravity that's parallel to the hill. Now one thing I always remind my students of, and you have to be really careful about this, is when you're drawing a free body diagram, you always show the actual forces acting on an object as solid lines, and components are dotted lines. So if you're drawing a free body diagram of a block on a hill, you always want to show that force down the hill as a dotted line. There isn't an actual force down the hill. What there is is just a component of gravity which is parallel to the hill. But ultimately, it's this force down the hill, which is unbalanced, meaning there's nothing acting uphill on the block, that causes the block to slide down the hill. 
Now, sure, if you were to add friction to this hill or something like that, then the block may just sit still, but that's an issue for another day. So I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.